Well, I'm back home now and I'm disappointed. I know it's not my fault and I did the best I could. How about we put that new collar on? What do you think? You would look so beautiful in purple. What you doing? Where you going? Okay, Cheesy. Enoli's out running with the goats doing her job. I'm gonna feed you since you're separate. I'm really excited about a yummy breakfast. And by the way, I'm buying you a brand new dish bowl. How do you feel about it? Let's do it. Not a problem. Thank you, sir. Very good. Is it good? Are you ready? Can I borrow this for a minute? Thank you, sir. Very good. What a good boy. Come here. Let's put it right here. Yeah. Yeah. How about a steak later? How does that sound? Yeah. So, good morning. I don't know if I've said good morning already for this video. This is what I was talking about in a previous video about food aggression with livestock guardian dogs. Ever since he was a puppy, now see, he's fussing because he knows some turkeys are coming around. He don't like that. But we have never had real food aggression. He doesn't do anything to anybody that touches his food as far as the turkey or whatever he just sort of growls at him like hey don't do that because you know betty white she thinks she deserves it no i haven't found my glove <laughs> who knows oh that was so good Is this what you want? Betty. Well, get them. Is it good? Okay. Yeah, I think this will work. It's not the super wide one, but it is large. So I think that will work. Gosh, these gloves. Okay. Okay, girl. I think this is going to work. Yep. Yeah, you annihilated the other one. <laughs> Good deal. Okay, are you excited? You're not supposed to be doing that. You went, oh, 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 God. You want an egg? You want a fill egg? They're my favorites. Oh. <laughs> oh, girlfriend, you deserve it. Oh. 
Come on, take it. You can have it, baby. What are you doing? I bet we all know what you're doing. Blanche, you're just trifling. Simply trifling. Well, I'm back home now and I'm disappointed. I know it's not my fault and I did the best I could. I just put this on social media in the Farragut area. If you live in deep West Knoxville, Farragut area, around where Kingsgate is, down where the Ingalls is. <sighs> Folks, you cannot have these ginormous livestock guardian dogs as personal pets and not expect to potentially have problems. I'm not blaming the owner. I don't know the full situation or circumstance, but I'm just saying, I'm just saying it again. There's a certain reason why I have done and trained my LGDs the way that I have and continue to, and it's not foolproof. It's not foolproof, okay? I get that. <sighs> Let me tell you the story. Coco, I did my best, brother. I did my best. What you got on your nose, buddy? <laughs> All right. So I had to get in the house and make myself a little something something to eat because I was about to have a hissy fit. You know what I'm talking about? You have your early morning breakfast and you do good and you go run errands and you're determined that you are not going to eat fast food. <laughs> And I made it all the way home, and I th it threw me into a hissy fit, y'all. I feel better now. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, are you the responsible party, perhaps, if something happens? Is it you? Okay, if we get a maternity ward going on up here, are you going to be the babysitter? Huh, Betty? Huh? Well, so here's the deal. So I had to head up to Knoxville, go through Farragut, check out my post office, and uh, do a couple chores up there, and I was on Kingston Pike. It's a major four-way, two-way road, old road, and has a big turn lane. Very, very busy. Farragut is not what Farragut used to be. If you're from this area, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, Farragut farmers no more, honey. You're lucky to find a, 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 a six by six plot of farmland in Farragut anymore. It's really sad, but it is, it's what's happened, y'all. They call it progress. I'm, I'm just not sure. But anyway, so I'm traveling down Kingston Pike. I get up towards where, if you know what I'm talking about, where there's the Ingles on the left, and you're at an intersection, and I'm at the stoplight, and I look over, and there is this white beast running. Now, I didn't film because I'm at, the, I'm at a red light about to, you know, it's sitting there, and it's about to take off, and here comes this Pyrenees. And it, it just has no regard for traffic. Traffic's already moving again. And everybody had to slam their brakes. It ran in between about three or four cars. And uh, I pulled over. The woman in front of me let me over because it cut over to a, a, where a bank and a vet, ironically, a vet clinic and a, a neighborhood called Kingsgate. Well, long story short, I pulled over and another lady or two pulled in and the dog was at the bank. Now, this is a... I could not tell if it was a male or a female um, because it would not let you get too close. Um, I mean, clearly, I honestly believe it was by size, I think it was a male. And it had a collar on, but no tags. But I couldn't tell if it was a shock collar or if it was one of those collars, a barking, an anti-bark collar. Well, that's when the charade began. Well, so long story short, we went round and round with it at the bank trying to be calm, you know. What we did not want was it to turn back left and, you know, run 
say 30 feet and be right back in the smack middle of traffic. That's the last thing we wanted to happen. A man pulled in, he saw what was going on and it ran up to into the neighborhood behind it and was trying to play with some dogs in a fence. The problem with this dog is it's clearly spooked, it's young, it's trying to do its own thing. It did come over and smell my hand. One time I thought, well, we might be making some headway. And that's when I was like, no, I don't see any tags. Or does it have tags? I'm like, no, it doesn't have any. So then it takes off again. It, it, it's just like any other dog that wants its way, but especially a livestock guardian dog, a uh, Great Pyrenees, they have a mind of their own, people. So we got the idea. I was like, let's go get the vet clinic because it's just right down here on the corner. They came up, sent two people. We were going to try to get it. Um... I think once it kind of figured out, I'm, I'm outnumbered and I don't like this, it took off on the wrong side of the road up into the neighborhood. Everybody was having a fit because it was like, oh no, it's gonna get hit. And it disappeared just like right over the hill. So we went, so I went, ran back down, got in the car. The, the folks from the vet clinic hopped in my car and we went up and down and checked with people and it was gone. So if you live in Kingsgate, and probably your dog came over from Fox Den over back by up behind the angles. Uh, I, folks, I did the best I could to save your dog. I hope, I hope somebody gets a hold of this dog because it's a beauty. So, I'm not trying to be preachy preach, bossy boss, okay? Because I don't know the circumstances of exactly where this dog comes from. Um, you know, the history behind it. Did it just get out? Does the does the does the owner know? Is the, the owner elderly? I, did it dig out? It didn't look like it had dug out, but this is what I'm trying to tell y'all, and I'm telling myself too. I have to remind myself of this because I get a lot of questions about why is your dog out with her goats, but she's on a tether. She's a young dog. This one is young, uh, by the way. I would say it's less than. I'd say it's two or less. These dogs have a job and they have a mind of their own. And actually the great Pyrenees of all the approximate 30 or so livestock guardian dog breeds that you can find around in the world, they're not hunting dogs. They're not lap dogs. They're not, uh, you know, sheep dogs. These have the ultimate mind of their own scenario compared to any other dog uh, or type of dog, okay? These are not guardians in terms of people, although they will, if they're very loyal. But when they think they want to get out and roam and when they think they want to bust and do and when they have their minds i mean it's it's like a it's like an 18 19 year old boy trying to bust out and get his freedom girls are like that too though but you just there's no stopping it so here's what i'm saying and i don't know if this will reach anybody that makes a difference if you are not ready for a massive daily commitment of training one of these animals for at least two to three years please do not get one Anatolian Shepherds and Great Pyrenees and the Crosses are very common now uh, throughout, you know, our society. And I, I'm just going to be ugly and say most people don't know what they're doing. I mean, I, they need a lot of space, a lot of room, and daily training. That doesn't mean there aren't success stories because you'll have somebody get on here and say, well, mine just sleeps on the couch all day and she's never barked and she's never... Well, you're a one in 500 million. They bark... They're, they they have a job to do, and you're not stopping them from having their job. They're going to develop whatever you know whatever they think they need to do as their job, or whatever you set help set them to be their job. That's what they're going to do. And this dog, who knows, by what the direction that he came from, probably lives in a pretty nice neighborhood and has a you know a may not have that big of a backyard. And here's the thing, is he properly fenced in? I mean, if you've got three to four foot pick, you know, cutie tootie picket fencing style with a dog like this, honey, they'll hurdle that. I mean, I'm just saying. So I'm sounding a little bit pleadful because I'm a little stressed out about the scenario. You know, when you try, try, try and you fail. And I know my, my good deed won't, go un deed won't go unnoticed. And me saying this here might help somebody and me putting it on Facebook, somebody's dog I hope gets rescued. But I'm just saying, even if you have a large farm and you, you know, if you're really busy right now and you're not sure and you're not ready to commit, don't set yourself up for disappointment. Just, just don't. I'm just telling you right now. Um, you know, it's a major time thing. It's a major, um, you know, like I said, a commitment to these animals because when they're out and they're doing their thing, there's no stopping them. 
especially if they're not spayed or neutered. They do tend to try to break out and wander and whatnot and do all the things they do. But this is why I tell you, this is why I do the things that I do. Um, and while we try to keep our animals safe, I, I would be devastated if any of my dogs got out. It happens. I know I'm not judging. I get it. But I'm just saying in these particular cases with these particular kinds of dogs, folks, they're not golden retrievers. So just want to know I said that. Y'all pray for this dog. It's, this has sent me a little bit of orbit today. <laughs> and I got to go get feed. But we're doing great. And, uh, you know, I just want to always pass along these types of videos and thoughts because, you know, I just want people to be careful and safe and I want them to know what they're getting into because they're, you know, they're a lot of work, a lot of work. I hope you're doing well. Hope it's warmed up just a little bit. We got more weather coming in this week and maybe next week we'll get some polar Arctic blast. I don't know. Hey, are those beasts as much of a job as you are, you little calf? <laughs> Guys, I love you. Hope you're doing well. I've got a fun video, something I didn't know about coming up, and that backsplash is going to look good, too. We're going to make it. <laughs> we'll see y'all in the next video.